Pedro Pascal has been said to be the perfect choice to play Joel in the new HBO TV series The Last of Us, adapted from the hit video game. He proved his ability as a screen-stealing actor with his role on The Mandalorian, as well as Game of Thrones and Narcos. However, Pedro's road to success wasn't linear and happened suddenly. The actor, who is now 47, had been auditioning since he was 20 while working as a waiter, only landing theater gigs in small roles. It wasn't until 2014 that he found some fame with his stint on HBO's Game of Thrones. That being said, there's probably a lot you didn't know about Pedro Pascal, but we'll talk about his road to success, his upbringing in Chile, and more here for you on Famous Life. Jose Pedro Balmaceda Pascal was born on April 2, 1975 in Santiago, Chile. His mother, Veronica Pascal Urita, was a child psychologist, while his father, Jose Balmaceda Riera, is a fertility doctor. And Pedro also has an older sister, Javiera, as well as two younger siblings, Nicholas and Lux, an actress and transgender activist back in Chile. Pedro's mom was the cousin of Andres Pascal Allende, the nephew of Socialist President Salvador Allende and leader of the movement of the revolutionary left, an urban guerrilla movement dedicated to the overthrow of the military dictatorship of Augusto Pinochet. According to Pedro, his parents were devout followers of Allende and active in the resistance groups against the Pinochet dictatorship. Because of this, Pedro's family had to seek refuge in the Venezuelan embassy in Santiago soon after his birth. Pedro explained, My mother's cousin was very primary in the opposition against the military regime, but there was a huge degree of separation between him and my parents. Still, helping some people hide got them into hot water. Eventually, they got to the Venezuelan embassy and claimed asylum. We were sent to Denmark and then the US. My sister and I were born in Chile and raised in the States. And my little brothers were born in the States and raised in Chile after my parents moved back in 1995. The family had ultimately moved to the USA and at that time, Pedro was raised in Orange County, California and San Antonio, Texas. Despite this, by the time he was eight years old, his family was taking regular trips back to Chile to visit his large family, his 34 first cousins to be exact. Basically, Pedro's roots to his native country still run deep. His father is still a doctor there while one of his siblings is in medical school and the other is an actor. He said about going back to Chile, I've gone back my whole life. Everything is very normal in their lives. I feel a profound sense of gratitude and luck for that and an incredible mourning for such an unjust and horrifying chapter that's still not given its due and just recognition. When he was a youngster, Pedro was involved in competitive swimming and took part in state championships in Texas when he was 11, but he stopped competing once he joined drama class and found his true passion. He studied acting at the Orange County School of the Arts and graduated in 1993, then attending New York University's Tisch School of the Arts, graduating in 1997. When talking about growing up, Pedro said, I just went to your typical public schools and my dad would take us to the movies every week or he'd buy scalp tickets to San Antonio Spurs games. I remember I was four or five years old and my parents, who were very young, took us to see the police in Austin and Iggy Pop opened. While Pedro has quite the impressive acting resume these days and has starred on some of the biggest shows, it all came later on for him. When he was 20, Pedro was already auditioning and working on his craft while working as a waiter on the side. He got some theater gigs and bit acting parts, but nothing would stick and make him well known until much later when Game of Thrones came along. Over the years, Pedro appeared on a handful of popular TV shows, including Buffy the Vampire Slayer, The Good Wife, Homeland, The Mentalist, and Graceland. He also played the kidnapper Reggie in the Law & Order Criminal Intent episode Weeping Willow, and further appeared as Special Agent Greer in Law & Order SVU episode Smoked. Next, Pedro was cast in the pilot for the Wonder Woman TV adaptation set for 2011, but unfortunately the show was never picked up. It wouldn't be much longer though until the actor would catch a pretty big break. In June 2013, Pedro was cast as Oberyn Martell in the fourth season of the hit HBO series Game of Thrones. And he was super excited for the opportunity because he was also a major fan of the series before this. The role helped get the ball rolling for Pedro and bigger projects continued to come in. In 2015, he was cast as US DEA agent Javier Pina in the Netflix original series Narcos. His family was also really proud of him for making it big as an actor. Pedro revealed, my family can't 
can't believe it. My dad is so impressed. He loves the movies and would take us two, three times a week. So this fantasy of mine of becoming an actor, I can blame my father for that. He's so amazed and so happy. From 2015 to 2017, Pascal's detective Pina explored the pursuit of world-renowned Colombian drug lord Pablo Escobar on Narcos. The first three seasons gave a fictional account of Escobar's life all the way until his death, but Pedro ended up leaving the show for a pretty scary reason. In 2017, Carlos Munoz Portal was on location in Mexico to scout for the new season of Narcos, but he didn't make it home. It was reported at the time that Portal's body was found in a remote area near the Hidalgo state border. Pedro called Portal's death a tragedy and explained why the show couldn't continue until the bosses guaranteed safety for all. He said, we can't can't do it if it's not safe. We're talking about lives. If they want to do it, then they'll figure out a safe way. Around this time, Pablo Escobar's brother, Roberto de Jesus Escobar Gaviera, said he would close their little show down if Netflix refused to pay a $1 billion fee. He also encouraged the streaming platform to hire hitmen for security. Well, I would say that's understandable. Some more roles that came for Pedro soon after included playing a vampire in 2015's Bloodsucking Bastards, then starring as Agent Whiskey in Kingsman The Golden Circle in 2017, as well as a few more movie roles. Pedro also has a ton of onstage experience, both acting and directing, receiving awards for his role in the International City Theatre production of Orphans, and he's performed a ton of other theatre works. He appeared off-Broadway in a handful of plays and is a member of New York City's Labyrinth Theatre Company. Pedro made his Broadway debut in early 2019 in an adaptation of King Lear. In 2019, Pedro also began portraying another one of his biggest roles to date, the title role in The Mandalorian, first live-action Star Wars TV show which airs on Disney+. Other roles for Pedro over the last few years included the Netflix heist drama Triple Frontier, the film Wonder Woman 1984, Judd Apatow's The Bubble, as well as when he co-starred with Nicolas Cage in The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. In February 2021, Pedro was cast as the lead role of Joel Miller in the upcoming HBO series The Last of Us, based on the hit video game of the same name. However, there's also a third season of The Mandalorian airing around the same time, and because some of the similarities between plots of the two shows, HBO almost ruled Pedro out of the casting process for The Last of Us. In The Mandalorian, Pedro takes a ward under his wing, travels through dangerous territories, and battles to protect the youngster. In The Last of Us, his character Joel would be doing pretty much the same thing. Showrunner of The Last of Us, Craig Mazin, said he was initially worried about the overlap. He explained, we talked about the fact that he was in the Mandalorian and you can do the math like Mandalorian equals Joel, baby Yoda equals, but then you realize actually no, it's not the same. The Mandalorian is interacting with a mute, adorable creature. And I love that show, but interacting with a teenager is complicated. And also the fact they have him covered in a helmet is a huge factor. Either way, Pedro needed permission from Disney to work on the HBO show, which he explained was very generously given. And it's a great thing it all worked out because Pedro is no doubt the perfect choice to play Joel in The Last of Us, which is based on a horror adventure survivalist video game set 20 years after a devastating fungal outbreak that infected more than half of the world's population. Pedro's character portrayal in the series is already getting noticed, and the show is getting rave reviews so far, also being compared to early seasons of The Wall. Walking Dead. There's also a small but impressive cast that helps keep the storyline on track, and Pedro's Joel shines through. Pedro explained that he wanted to make Joel his own rather than simply copy the video game, and he did just that, taking on the qualities of a man who has been through it all for the last few years, but portraying him through his own quiet and charming vibe too. The actor said about this, that was the way to understand Joel best, you know, with my own heart. I found him to be a very hardened person and not somebody who reflects on his own feelings, even before losing his daughter or the world ending before his very eyes. And that loss kind of calcifying and shaping who he is and how he survives thereafter. At the end of 2022, Pedro was also cast in Freaky Tales, set to be directed by Anna Bowden and Ryan Fleck. While there's a whole season of The Last of Us to see Pedro Pascal in his leading man action, as well as a new season of The Mandalorian, there will also surely be more to come for this talented actor. He may not have had the quickest road to fame, but it is no doubt happening for him now. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to Famous Life and leave a comment for who you'd like us to feature next.